Hi, it's Pastor Doug, back again with another video. And if I could beg your patience, this one's going to be a little bit rambling. Because this is really not a question, but it's something that's been on my heart and my mind for the last few months that I'd like to at least share with you this night. And um, maybe this will launch into a much more long and detailed uh, animated videos coming in the future. But I've been pondering a lot about secularism of late. And of course, secularism and Christianity are really two very different things. And as we see the world get more and more secular, we're seeing the divide between the Christian and the secular minds expand. We, we fundamentally think and talk differently. The things that Christians find sinful and that one should be ashamed of, the secular left, of course, celebrates and worships. And the things that the left finds shameful and terrible, Christians rejoice in. But this lockdown has really caused me to think the divide is much greater than I even realized. Now, I don't want to get into the politics of the lockdown. I, I know there's a huge debate how serious it is, how not serious it is, how should we react or not react. I, I don't want to get into that. But I've noticed something has changed in our thinking, at least in my lifetime. And let me give you just a really silly, simple example. I recently taught, I took my daughter, Rebecca, um, to uh, my mother's house. And I actually drove her on the route I used to take to walk to elementary school. And that route was one, sorry, was 0 0.9 miles. We were literally one-tenth a mile away from getting a bus. So I had to walk to school as a little kid. And my mother, bless her soul, would send me out the door as a five-year-old and I would walk basically a mile to school by myself through a blue-collar suburban neighborhood and that was the norm and I realized as I was driving uh, Rebecca to this route I used to take and explaining my memories to her I realized I would never do that today I, I wouldn't let my high school daughter walk a mile to school through suburbia. And I'm like, wow, something has really changed. Now, you could say, all oh, Tay is not as safe as it was back then. Eh, I'm not sure if I fully agree with that, depending on where you live. I think our mindset has changed. And I think it has actually fundamentally changed. And the more I pondered, I, I think it's actually rooted in creation. And let me read to you Genesis 1, chapter 28. And it reads, God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and Fill the earth and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now, of course, for Christians, this is no surprise. It sounds kind of boring and simple, like, yeah, what's so revolutionary about that, Pastor? Understand, for the secular left, this is, this is fundamentally offensive. I mean, just go through every part. God bless them. First of all, well, God at best is optional extra. We should never insert God into any public discourse. And the notion that God would bless us, that there's something special about humanity. For the secularist, humanity is just a bunch of cells banging together. I mean, there's nothing unique, nothing special. Matter of fact, humanity is the problem. And the notion that we are to go fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, oh, that's terrible. The main purpose of marriage, the main purpose of male-female relations is not recreation, but procreation? Yep, absolutely the case. And from that, humanity is to go and subdue and rule creation? Oh, that's just so offensive. How could that be? And so those basic, simple things that Christians for centuries have taken for granted are fundamentally under attack by the secular mindset, who basically view humanity as just simply a mistake. We are living in this fragile ecosystem that we could easily destroy at any second, and there's nothing inherently special about us. Matter of fact, we're probably the problem. If that's your view, that's going to radically change things. And that's going to explain why, for many of the secularists, their highest virtue is safety. We need to be safe. Because if we die, well, that's it. Now, 
I'm not abdicating for anything radical. I'm not abdicating, you know, we just are mindless in our approach to life. We have to be prudent. We have to be as shrewd as serpents. Yes, there's a time to be saved. But that's not the highest virtue. The highest virtue is to love God. And we know what God has said in his word, that we are called to go and boldly live in his creation. And his creation has been given to us, and we are lords of it. Now, should we use the creation in a wise manner? Absolutely, because we are stewards of it. But that mentality that we are a blessed species, sorry, not even a species, we are the creatures that are in the image of God and that we are blessed, we are made by God, we are called to subdue the creation, we're called to rule over it, we're called to procreate. Those things our world fundamentally hates. And I think that explains the great divide. You know, it's not just, well, we believe God, they don't believe in God. We have a fundamental different view of creation and the nature of man. And I think that explains the different approaches. Like I said, I really don't want to debate politics with this, and, and I certainly don't want to get into the debate about COVID-19 because I am no scientist. But something has changed in our thinking, and that's troubling. And I would encourage Christians more and more to have a biblical worldview, to think completely of the scriptures, to have a systematic thinking of the world, to think in a biblical way. And that's going to bring you a lot of trouble because how the world thinks is completely opposite. Like I said, one of these days, I would love to do a video going through all the differences because, again, we're on op every opposite side of the on every issue. But I really do think it might be rooted in creation. Well, like I said, this video was kind of rambling. My apologies for that. But it's something that's been on my mind and my heart of late. And I would ask your prayers and your thoughts. If you have any, any thoughts, you can put them in the comments below. Well, as always, I hope Christ's grace is with you all. Amen.